guys, and ladies, in this episode I'm going to be showing off a Japanese house slash diorama that I recently constructed. And before I get started I just want to let you guys know that I did not build this 100% from scratch. It was a prefabricated like Japanese style house made out of pine that I found at the thrift store. So it appears to be some type of model kit that someone built or almost finished building and they just gave up on it. Um, so I found it, really good price at the thrift store, and then I finally decided to do all the necessary work to get it looking good. I had to sand it, I had to paint it up, do all kinds of modifications and everything, so let's check it out. <laughs> Selena, take it away. So other than sanding it down and prepping it, uh, one of the big things I had to do was tackle the roof. So before I put these little roof tiles and shingles on, there was nothing. It was just flat wood. So I got thin balsa wood sheets and I cut little individual tiles. I cut, I think about 185 or so individual little tiles and glued them on, painted them, etc. These little sticks right here in between, those are actual bamboo sticks from like a bamboo placemat. I just took it apart and then I just cut the little bamboo uh, sticks to size. So the roof was probably one of the most time consuming parts of the project. There's was a lot of prep work, um, measuring and cutting all these individual little pieces, gluing it, waiting for the glue to dry, painting it. I put a bunch of coats of sealer in a, wa a water Mod Podge mixture just to protect it. These are really thin pieces of balsa wood. So I really didn't want anything to chip if I hit it, if I dropped a figure on it, uh, hit it on something moving it, it's kind of sturdy. The paint doesn't chip. So that was really important to me. Um, so it took a little extra time, but hopefully in the long run it's worth it. So another thing I wanted to tackle was the doors. So actually this piece and this piece are part of the original doors. So they had two pieces on each side and they swung outwards. They were like on a little hinge. I really didn't like the way they looked. And functionality wise, they didn't serve a purpose. Um, so what I had to do pretty much from here to right here, I had to just dremel and use a saw and just gut it all out. And then I put these doors on there. These are actually windows, uh, prefabricated windows from Hobby Lobby that I just spray painted black. Um, added this little piece of balsa wood on the bottom. And it actually comes with a little piece of plexiglass see-through window. But I just spray painted it uh, both sides white. And it actually, um, you shine light through it. So if I put a couple lights, or I made a little spots inside, or I put lights underneath, and uh, light will shine through. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, real quick, let me show you uh, the lights that I put in here. So I should have went the extra mile and actually made one of these doors removable with magnets or something. That way I can just slide my hand in there real easy and put the lights in there. Because I didn't want to have permanent fixtures in there, especially if I have to change the batteries on the lights. Um, so what I have to do, I have to lift the house up off this, and I made a slit where I can slide my hand up in there and push these lights. Um, so I should have went the extra mile, but check it out. So yeah, that looks real good, shining through. Let me see if I can get it a little darker in here. So yeah, I have just a remote. These lights that I got, they're really great. And then I can make it red. I can make it green. Make it blue. That red looks cool. Come on. And then, um, you can also dim them. See, that's really cool. So this railing right here, I didn't do too much to it. I shaved off some unnecessary pieces and um, I painted it of course but it was actually sitting on top of the deck right here because so it was actually moved over about like an inch so you couldn't even get like a figure through right here because it would be pressed up against his feet it was right there so I had to pry it off and the interesting thing about this there was very minimal glue it was mostly held on by nails and I think it's just pine wood at least it smelled like pine wood but the majority of it was held on by nails, so it was really tricky to take things apart without damaging it. So I had to take this off, 
Um, after I painted the deck and I sanded it and I got it looking good, I actually just glued this on the outside of it. So that way you get enough space. Still only one figure can go and it's a little tight, but it's way better than it was. So I went with the real simple paint scheme. Just a dark brown on white. You got that blue dry brush on the roof and just like the stone stairs and then the, uh, the barrier around the stilts. So I had to do a lot of paint to cover it. Like I said, it was bare wood before, so I spray painted the whole thing white, and then I had to touch up some spots. I had to keep pretty much touching up. There still is a little imperfections that I have to go through. Um, I just got a little burnt out, so I kind of just gave it a break, but they're just little minimal ones that you really wouldn't see unless you're close up. I mean, some of them might actually show up on the camera. Um, but I did a couple different shades of brown, I dry brushed some brown, and then I got a black, and I kind of did a little bit of a wash to kind of bring out the wood grain a little bit and then I just tried to get everything else as white as I could all the white spots so originally I was going to chop the stilts down so it's you know it's on raised stilts underneath it has these wooden pegs and I was gonna chop them down to just about an inch um, just to have it one of like the lower level houses and just like on the little tiny stilts but then I thought it would kind of be cool to build a stone barrier around the stilts so the house still kind of raised up a little bit. And I've been wanting to try the technique where you, so you carve rocks and you put the uh, spackle in there. So that was, uh, that took a lot of time, a lot of, little bit of trial and error. I had to repaint it a couple times, um, but it came out really good. So what I actually did is cut like I normally do bricks. Um, I didn't do it 100%. If I'm cutting bricks, usually I'll try to get the lines as straight as I possibly could, um, you know, so they look uniform. These ones, I kind of just eyeballed it a little bit. I, I still kind of measured it out, but um, especially the lines going down, I kind of just eyeballed it. I, I made sure they weren't perfect, because then what I did is I kind of just cut little pieces at an angle, and then um, I go through with like a little pick, and I just pick out all the pieces. And then I um, actually went through and just filled it in with spackle with my finger. And then I painted over it. And then I dry brushed it. And then I went through in the grout again. So it took me a couple different times to get the colors I wanted right. So this is with the spackle. And then I didn't do the spackle on the side of the stairs right here. So you can see the difference how the grooves are actually cut really deep opposed to you can see like some type of grout in between right there so i definitely like the spackle look better than the non-spackle look honestly i got lazy on this one i just didn't want to do it anymore the stairs were actually really fun i just stacked up the uh half inch foam stacked it up and then i i carved the stone and then this is this part is actually the one inch foam and then this is these little pieces are the half, or this is the one inch foam, one inch foam. This is the half inch foam. I just cut little tiny slices. I was going to use the project foam board, but those are a little flimsy, especially when paint hits them. They tend to curl a little bit. So um, this is just pink foam, pink foam. So all the rocks, everything painted gray is all pink foam. So I want to give a fatty shout out to Ogie's, Ogie's Dioramas. He's the one that inspired me to do the kind of stone with the spackle in the grooves. He's posted a bunch of work in progress pictures of him doing that on projects in the past and that's what kind of inspired me to try it myself. Um, so big shout out to him. I really like the way it came out. It looked awesome. I can't wait to try it again on another project, especially with what I've learned. So when I first came across this house at the thrift store, I'll admit I was a little hesitant to picking it up. Um, it looked like an awesome little project to do. You know, somebody already constructed it. All I had to do was the fun stuff. You know, all the little details, the paint, you know, make it come to life. So I was re that was really appealing to me. But the size um, was kind of a problem. Maybe not a problem, but a concern. Um, the roof is actually a really good size. Um, the body of the house, it's, you can see on the side profile, it's really narrow and how low the roof sits and you can see i mean this guy's a six foot tall character so you know but still you can see you know how tall he is right there and then he's hitting his head right here so articulated icons were still out about a year 
Um, so, I, but I picked, ended up picking up, anticipating that they are going to be shorter. So that, you know they're smaller figures. So you can see, I mean, it's still a little short, but especially since I built around it, you know, I have the staircase going up to it. Um, with all the detail, you know, it, it definitely plays off now. You know, and this thing, compared to a figure, it does look massive. Um, but if you kind of just look close, you can kind of start seeing, you know, how, how small it actually really is in some spots. Like I said, the roof is massive. Um, it's just this house part, which is a little small. But I'm definitely glad I picked it up. And it's a lot more work than I anticipated. You know, going into it, I was like, sweet, just throw some roof shingles on there, a little bit of paint, I'm good. Um, but all the little stuff added up. You know, the roof took a long time to do. Um, the stairs was actually really easy, and it was fun. Um, this took a while to do, and just all the painting. You know, I had to keep throwing layers and layers of brown until I got the color I liked. Um, and, you know, the white, too. You know, white's kind of hard to lay down um, to get it looking like a thick, nice white. But definitely, I'm happy with the project. And um, I'm going to start doing some ACBA shots with it. So let me get this thing to set up, and then uh, we'll see how it looks. So my recently finished diorama and little setup, a little ACBA setup. So I just got the dial right here. Got some accent pieces. Got these food dogs. These were originally gold, and I painted them. Uh, they look like stone. So I did a couple of different tones of gray, dry brushing to kind of make it look like stone. I also have some smaller ones too if you want to go with the little dogs or you can go with the big dog. Uh, this is just like some fake grass I got from the dollar store. This, um, this mat I made with a project foam board and I just glued a bunch of sand and painted it. It's kind of a tedious process, but I like it. And then these are like wooden mats. It's like this thin rolled like wood bark kind of stuff. These were like mats and it was actually pretty, pretty big and I cut it. So I always think these look like a cool fence. consuming parts of the project what sweet dinner time